What's up everyone, and welcome back to episode 4 of Making Goosebumps Covers in Lego. We have 6 more to add to the collection, so grab a fruit roll-up and a Kool-Aid jammer as we once again dive into some of the most iconic, creepy covers from your childhood. For today's first entry, we have Night of the Living Dummy 3, with Slappy making his first return to my series since all the way back in episode 1. In the book, Mr. Odell collects ventriloquist puppets and stores them in his attic. So one day when he finds Slappy thrown out in a dumpster, he decides to bring him home to add to the collection. But soon after, his kids, Trina and Dan, start to hear creepy noises and voices coming from the attic and begin to suspect that the dummies have come alive. For the build, I was able to recreate the attic where Slappy is sitting front and center along with nine other dummy companions. All of them are using mid-sized bendable legs, which in itself adds a bit to the creepy factor when placing them next to regular minifigures. And I'm using an assortment of different torsos that I tried to match to the original cover. Some notable parts that I liked getting to use were this creepy torso with a spider from the Spooky Girl, Elmo's torso for this dummy, this version of Snape's, which literally has a dead cat on it, the Joker's, and this skirt and bow for the girl dummy that isn't accurate to the cover, but helps to make her look more like a creepy dummy for Slash. I'm using this cartoonish looking suit along with these arms from Penguin that have cuff printing for some extra detail. For the attic itself, I started with Slappy's chair and I really like how it turned out. It's the perfect size for him and this burnt orange color helps to make it look like an old ratty dingy grandma chair that you'd actually find in someone's attic. I also built this love seat which can fit a couple more dummies but is a much simpler build. Behind the dummies, you'll find all of these boxes stacked messily on top of each other, and each one is filled with a lot of junk. However, I made sure to include various weapons in the boxes just to make it that much creepier. And at the top, you'll find this vent that the dummies may be able to sneak through as they terrorize all the different rooms in the house. For a bonus fact, in the original Night of the Living Dummy 3 episode, Zane is actually portrayed by none other than Hayden Christensen himself, Anakin Skywalker. The second entry for today's episode is the second book in the original Goosebumps series, Stay Out of the Basement. The book tells the story of Dr. Brewer, a botanist who loses his job and decides to bring some of his work home where he continues in the family's basement. However, Dr. Brewer's kids, Margaret and Casey, start to worry and freak out as they suspect their father of becoming a plant monster himself. For this cover, I immediately started with the Dr. Brewer plant monster minifigure, which was a ton of fun to make. As you can see, he has plants growing out all over him just like the original cover. To attach most of those pieces, I'm using this back clip, but he also has plants growing out of his head and feet. His head is Brainiacs from DC, and I'm using the Mad Scientist minifigure's torso. On the floor, you'll find a bunch of these lime green stickered wood pieces, and behind Dr. Brewer, you can see his lab table that's filled with a ton of different beakers and vials of all the different chemicals used for the experiments. Most of those are built with translucent cut pieces, bottles, and various other parts. I also tried to make these sections look like cabinets by using these jumper plates. On the back wall, you'll even find some plants starting to grow. Since that's the majority of the original cover, I decided to add some extra detail by building some stairs leading down to the basement. They are built using a floating design that allows you to see between each stair. For one last detail, I included this extra door on the side where you'll find one of Dr. Brewer's other plant monsters creeping underneath the stairs. Overall, this is a small simple build, but the lime and purple color scheme really help it pop. For a bonus fact, if you grew up in the 90s, this may not be the most recognizable cover to you, as the original was actually this version, featuring a plant monster's hand reaching around the basement door. Surprisingly, the original cover art wasn't done by Tim Jacobus, the illustrator of nearly all of the original Goosebumps covers. However, Jacobus did make the cover for today's video when the series was reprinted in 2003. If you're enjoying the entry so far, please like this video, and while you're at it, tell me your recommendations for episode 5 in the comments. For our third entry, we have another fan favorite that I never realized was so popular until I started seeing all of your comments, A Shocker on Shock Street, which has been requested more than 50 times now. In the book, Shock Street is a horror movie franchise featuring monsters within an accompanying theme park. Think Walt Disney, but more action-packed and monster-based. When Aaron and Marty arrive at the Shock Street Studios theme park, all of the monsters turn out to be more real than either of them ever realized. To be honest, I put this one off for quite a while because I was never sure how I would build the giant scary praying mantis on the original cover. However, I knew I had to try for the fans, so after going over a lot of different ideas, I finally landed on using this mantisoid alien head from Lego 
LEGO's Galaxy Squad theme. It's not a perfect match since the original isn't an alien version or anything, but I figured this was close enough, which is built up using a ton of clipping bracket and fork pieces that allow each of the Mantis's legs and arms to be positioned in a lot of different angles. I used these cheese slopes for the Mantis's back to give it a scaly appearance. The rest of the build was fun as well, as I had to make everything in micro scale. This house is using headlight bricks flipped on their sides for windows, and further down the street, you'll find this castle style house. Across the street, there's this house, and for it, I just plugged one by one plates into these bricks with holes. I also got to build this micro car for the monster to smash, along with this street light, which uses this really strange Lego piece. The shock street sign can be posed with the mantis and crash down as well because it's connected with a pin piece. This is another cover that shoots off into the distance, so I tried to make some forced perspective with this road narrowing as it runs off. I know the mantis's color scheme isn't accurate on this one, but other than that, I hope it lived up to all the fan requests and expectations. The next entry for today's video is Phantom of the Auditorium. And without even reading the book, if you guessed this was a riff on the musical Phantom of the Opera, you'd be on the right track, as the original story focuses on solving the mystery surrounding the phantom that terrorizes the students of the school as they try to prepare for the play simply titled The Phantom. When building the minifigure, I was really lucky to have this head for Marvel's Falcon that matches the original cover perfectly. The rest of the minifigure is using a really old version of Snape's torso and legs, as well as Maleficent's cape which all contribute to the Phantom's black and purple color scheme. Behind the Phantom, you'll find the magenta stage curtain. Backstage, you'll find some props for the actors to use, as well as this trapdoor, leading down to the tunnels beneath the stage. In the story, the Phantom uses the trapdoor and tunnels beneath the school to plan his surprise entrances. In the tunnels, you'll find details like this rat. For a final addition, in front of the Phantom, you'll find a seating area for the audience that gradually rises like an actual auditorium. Each chair is the perfect size to comfortably fit a minifigure, complete with armrests on each side. I'll definitely be using this build again in the future whenever I need a fast chair build. There's room for 16 minifigures in the auditorium. The fifth build for today is Legend of the Lost Legend. It's the smallest of today's entries as it's only a 12 stud square. In the book, Justin and Marissa adventure with their father into the forest of Brovania, where they seek to find the manuscript of the lost legend, rumored to be hidden away in a silver chest somewhere in the forest. But their search won't be without challenge as they'll encounter a slew of different creatures and even a viking woman. For this cover, I started with the viking woman herself. For the minifigure, I'm using this viking woman helmet piece with these cow horns, which matches the original almost exactly. The original character's green eyes really stand out, so I'm using this angry poison ivy face that has dark green lips to echo the original. Her torso and legs are from the Hercules minifigure. After finishing her, I moved on to the silver chest containing the lost legend. I was tempted to use one of the minifigure chest pieces, but I didn't have one in gray or silver and figured that that would be too easy, so I made this custom version instead. It's way bigger than the one we see on the cover, but I think the extra details make the size difference worth it. In the background, you'll find this giant tree made out of brown slopes with various clumps of snow on it. For today's final build, we have the biggest one I've made yet with Beware the Snowman. The book tells the story of Jacqueline, who moves to a city where a bunch of creepy snowmen haunt the town and come to life. If someone would have told me beforehand that this would end up being the largest Goosebumps cover out of four entire episodes, I would have thought they were crazy, as the original cover doesn't have nearly as much going on as some of the others. However, here we are. This was the last build I picked for this episode, and I figured that it would just be small, quick, and easy. I even originally planned to build this one with a minifigure-based snowman. However, after looking through all of my white minifigure heads, I knew I wouldn't be able to make a really good-looking scary snowman. The snowman's head and scary face was the most challenging part of the build, but in the end, I think it paid off. His snowy eyebrows are using these slow pieces, which I'm just now realizing make him look really scared if you just twist them up. His mouth is built using a couple of black tiles. His entire head and body are also able to be swiveled for a lot of different posing options. His red scarf's foundation is built up using plates, but my favorite part usage for this entire episode was using these red pirate flag pieces to make his scarf look like it's flowing in the wind. The snowman's stick arms are built out of mixel joints. His fingers are built using gray droid arms. If you want to remove the snowman, he pops off really easily as he's only connected with a couple of studs. On the ground, you'll find a lot of different slopes building up all of the snow drifts. And off to the side, you'll find this icy mailbox as well. The thing I liked the most about the mailbox was using this red crowbar piece for the indicator flag. This snowman turned out to be a lot of fun, and it's probably my favorite cover for this entire episode. 
And with that, we've knocked out another six Goosebumps covers. In total, we've now covered 23 across the four episodes. If you haven't seen episodes one through three, please consider watching them. And don't forget to leave your suggestions for episode five in the comments. Until next time, see you later.